In the very same village where he was born, Makar, a local forester, had a happy life with his bride, as time went by, Makar discovered that his job brought him happiness, that he valued his family, that he took great pleasure in his boys, that he built a house, and that he planted a great number of clever trees during his life. It is impossible to overstate the magnitude of his efforts to protect trees from being destroyed by fires and illegal logging, as a result, he has ensured that the forest and the people who live there will be preserved for future generations, as a result of Makar's persistent efforts to rescue and care for a wide variety of animals, his yard was always teeming with activity, he eventually released these animals back into the wild, a wolf by the name of Argo was now residing inside of an enclosure and was another resident over the past few days. Makar had been struggling with a feeling of boredom, and he had been wondering how much of his life he had yet to discover, even though he was committed to the taiga, he couldn't shake the feeling that he needed to see the world beyond, a former classmate of Makar's, Yuroslav, reached out to him at that very moment after the passing of his parents, Yuroslav, who was now known as Ostrovsky, intended to make a brief trip back to their hometown, he had sold the house that had been in his family for generations. Due to the fact that Yuroslav had no remaining familial ties, he was forced to seek hospitality. From his closest buddy during his stay and suggested that they go on a hunt, absolutely, my friend, I welcome the idea with open arms, Makar cheerfully said, I am very excited about it, I am looking forward to your arrival with great excitement, Alice, may I suggest that we go on a walk and try to catch some black grouse, we are going to make a stew for the days that are to come, it had been many years since they had last met, which had been prior to Makar's wedding on the previous occasion, during the time that they were waiting for Yuroslav to arrive. Makar was looking forward to the possibility that his friend would have on the occasion of seeing his wife, Yuroslav, a sturdy figure that had been weathered by the passage of time, eventually showed up at Makar's doorstep on the day that had been appointed. In light of the fact that Yuroslav had refreshed himself on his voyage, it was easy to see that he possessed remarkable courage and agility. In the course of the gathering that took place around the table, the guests and the hosts engaged in pleasantries and caught up on one other's lives, it was revealed by Yuroslav that he was now serving in the airborne forces and that he had recently been admitted to the hospital for rehabilitation and had been granted leave, respectively, he had indicated his wish to go hunting for black grouse, and he was taking advantage of the free time he had as Makar expressed his excitement about the possibility of going hunting. He stated that he had recently begun a search for black grouse himself. Following that, the topic of discussion shifted to Yuroslav's lack of a spouse, which prompted Oksana, Makar's wife, to make a joke about the possibility of finding him a suitable match among the eligible women in the hamlet, Indiana spite of Yuroslav's timid admission that he felt uncomfortable with women, Oksana continued to engage in her fun matchmaking efforts as the evening progressed. The guests continued to engage in light-hearted banter, Oksana made fun of Yuroslav by making fun of the fact that he had no trouble taming wolves but seemed to have a hard time dealing with females, it was ultimately determined that it would be best to retire for the night, with the intention of going hunting the next day, nevertheless, Makar was summoned to leave immediately by the district authorities the following morning following the event, after giving Yuroslav the assurance that he would be able to continue with the hunt with Argo. Makar rode his motorcycle and headed in the direction of the city, having been left to his own ways. Yuroslav embarked on a journey into the woods with Argo by his side, eager to reacquaint himself with the natural world and regain his hunting abilities, they were moving further away from the house with the intention of reaching the lectern and waiting for the birds to arrive there, on the other hand, it felt as though fate had other things in store for Yuroslav from the very beginning, Argo, the wolf, came to a sudden halt, standing at attention with his ears erect and his nose flaring, as if he had a sense that something was wrong, Yuroslav, who was curious about the situation, asked Argo if he had detected the scent of prey immediately before to Argo's ability to reply, the peace and quiet of the woodland was shattered by a distressing call for assistance, the scream ripped through the air, increasing in intensity to become a fervent appeal, and it came from a location that was relatively close by, almost immediately, the sound of gunfire reverberated in the distance, and then, there was a spooky calm, Argo ran away as quickly as a bolt of lightning, in a short amount of time, Yuroslav followed Argo's suggestion and arrived at a clearing where an unusual spectacle was taking place, one of the men was kneeling in the middle of the clearing, 
with his hands behind his head, while another young woman was holding him at gunpoint, after approaching the woman, who appeared to be familiar to him in some way, Argo positioned himself next to her, Argo communicated his direction. Of approach to the individual by displaying his teeth in a frightening manner, taking into consideration the circumstances, Yuroslav suggested that the district police officer be involved in the resolution of the case, a scarf was used to tie the man's hands, and the woman agreed with Yuroslav's recommendation, she referred to the man as an arrogant alpha male once she had done so, the subsequent step, which was obvious, was to bring the individual to the authorities so that they might take further action. While Argo and I were making our way, the girl who was holding the wolf responded, I am familiar with his owner, he is someone I am familiar with, it was stated to her that she had previously come into contact with the man when he assisted her in restraining a person who was causing her difficulties, after holding the perpetrator at gunpoint. They made their way towards Severinov Kuk in order to hand him up to the officer charged with the district police, it was during the ride that Yuroslav struck up a discussion with the young woman, through this talk, he learned that she had been residing in the nearby hamlet for the previous three months in order to take care of her grandfather, who was unwell, the man had persevered in his attempts, which culminated in his effort at vengeance when she went to Severinov Kuk for business purposes, this was despite the fact that she had repeatedly rejected his advances. Despite the fact that he was unaware of it, the young woman was proficient in. Sambo and quickly disarmed him before describing the scenario to Yuroslav just a few days later, when Yuroslav arrived back at his house, Makar and Oksana were there to greet him with laughter, they mocked him about their earlier attempts to match him with a suitable companion, which had now been revealed to be successful because he had acquired a tough partner, the couple was about to get married, and Yuroslav embraced his fiancée, Elena, who would shortly be joining them for the ceremony, as Yuroslav reflected on the events that transpired, he realized the unexpected turns that fate had taken and looked forward to the future with the person he had recently discovered love with, that's all about the first story and now let's watch another similar story, Benny had kept his promise to see his owner every day since Stephen was admitted to the hospital, despite the fact that doing so was against the rules of the institution, with that being said, an exception was made because the cat was the only thing that brought the elderly guy any happiness. Nevertheless, when a physician made a surprising observation, it left everyone in a state of utter surprise, Benny's daily visits were not simply for the purpose of providing companionship after discovering that the cat had been sneaking something to the elderly man, the doctor, Stephen, made preparations for a confrontation, the cat had been bringing something to the elderly man, however, what precisely was Leonardo trying to conceal, the only way to solve this enigma is to go back to the beginning of the story, Benny, the cat, had been doing so every day since Leonardo, his owner, was admitted to the hospital, despite the fact that the hospital had a policy that prohibited him from doing so, Leonardo is 85 years old, due to the fact that Benny offered Leonardo delight and it appeared that Leonardo's time was limited, an exception was allowed. Benny's warm and welcoming approach toward both patients and staff members, which lifted everyone's spirits, won over everyone, but as the old saying goes, everything that is good must come to an end, Benny's conduct began to change, and Stephen, who was one of the doctors who were caring to Leonardo, began to notice it, Stephen's curiosity was piqued when the cat, who had previously been full of friends, began to retreat, considering that Stephen is a cat lover himself. He found Benny's transformation to be particularly intriguing. Following his departure from the hospital, he made the decision to pursue the cat in order to solve the riddle, because of his unruffled manner and his contacts with those walking by, Benny was quite easy to follow, during the time that Stephen was following the cat to Leonardo's house, which was around 20 minutes away from the hospital, his concern for Benny's health increased greatly, when Benny entered the cat door, Stephen's anxiety increased since he was apprehensive of what was going to happen to him during his visit. Instead of simply entering, he approached the door and rang the bell, he did this instead of simply entering. Stephen felt movement behind the curtains, which indicated that someone was inside the house, despite the fact that he did not receive any reaction, Stephen, who was unsure of what had taken place inside, made the decision to keep a closer eye on Benny while he was in the hospital. Benny did not appear the following day, or even the day after that, which was a most unfortunate occurrence. Stephen was concerned that he might have frightened the unknown person who lived in the house, which could have 
prevented Benny from going back to the hospital, after this, he was left with a sense of remorse because he had followed the cat home without Benny, Leonardo's mood deteriorated, and his behavior became progressively antagonistic toward everyone, his behavior became increasingly hostile, everyone's work became more challenging as his attitude continued to deteriorate, in the end, a new guest by the name of Thomas showed up, which was an unusual occurrence given that Benny was the only person who had previously visited Leonardo, in addition to adding to the mystery, Stephen made the discovery that Thomas and Leonardo were not related to each other, the mood of Leonardo did not change despite the fact that Thomas was visiting him, inquiring about Thomas's relationship with Leonardo became a source of anxiety for Stephen, who struggled with the moral implications of doing so. Despite his desire to maintain his solitude, Stephen couldn't help but feel concerned after some time, he voiced his concerns about the safety of the situation, which led to Leonardo not having any visitors for a period of two days, the initial anger that Leonardo felt eventually led him to withdraw from any interaction with other people, Stephen was notified by security just as Benny arrived back at the hospital after his long absence, following the entrance of Benny, Stephen hurried to Leonardo's room and shut the door behind him, he had a strategy in mind beforehand, during the time that Stephen was attempting to pick up Benny, the cat put up a fight, which resulted in a hilarious chase around the hospital. After some time, Benny made the mistake of entering an office, which gave Stephen the opportunity to confine him inside. Benny was finally retrieved by Stephen, despite the fact that he had sustained a few scratches. After conducting a more thorough investigation, Stephen found a concealed chamber on Benny's collar that resembled a battery while also containing a pressure system. As time went on, it became clear that Benny had been instructed to recover objects by utilizing this container after Stephen had finally succeeded in opening the compartment, he was taken aback to see a white powder contained within it, when he finally understood everything, his first impulse was to approach Leonardo, everything began to make sense, Benny was such a sweet cat that he did not deserve to be treated in such a manner, and the notion of the elderly man taking advantage of him made him angry, however, Stephen was aware that he needed to approach the problem in a prudent manner with the intention of involving the authorities, Stephen made a phone call to the police and presented them with all of the pertinent information, the authorities gave their word that they would approach Thomas, and when they did, he immediately revealed his role without putting up any struggle in the subsequent events. The authorities acquired a warrant and entered Leonardo's residence, upon entering, they found two individuals who claimed to be members of his family, however, it was later determined that these individuals were actually his accomplices in illicit operations, a large number of illicit things were discovered, which resulted in arrests and investigations that are still ongoing. After then, the police confronted Leonardo at the hospital, where he responded with terror before coming to the realization that the situation was really serious, the fact that cocaine was discovered in Benny's collar led to the discovery that Leonardo and his accomplices were involved in the distribution of illegal substances. Leonardo's anger and grumpiness were the result of withdrawal symptoms that he experienced after Benny stopped coming to visit, upon becoming aware of the full scope of Leonardo's illicit operations, Stephen was taken aback by the discoveries that were gradually occurring, Leonardo and his associates were brought to light as a result of Stephen's efforts, which ultimately led to their police arrest, following this. Leonardo was moved to a jail hospital in order to await his trial, the medical. Staff there estimated that he had only a few years left to live following his relocation, his fellow conspirators were subjected to the same fate, and they were waiting to be tried for their participation in the illegal operation. Benny was able to find a happy ending despite the fact that he was left utterly alone. Benny's adoption was made possible by Stephen, who was concerned about Benny's health and happiness. In the aftermath of Benny's story being made public, he became a well-liked figure. In the community, which resulted in a huge amount of curiosity, following the development of a fondness for Benny, Stephen ultimately made the decision to adopt the cat himself, this arrangement allowed Benny to continue to lift spirits at the hospital while also providing him with a loving home, it was a win-win situation for everyone involved, with the exception of the crooks. When we think about Benny's predicament, it compels us to contemplate the significance of taking action or speaking out. Against violations of basic human rights, a lesson that can be learned from this narrative is the need of intervening when one witnesses wrongdoing.